Salutations, respected viewers. I'm George from Ireland, and here I am in front of the house of Sir John Lavery in London, uh, in the South Kensington area, which is a very desirable address. So, uh, Sir John Lavery um, is one of the best known painters uh, in Irish history. We're not, we're not renowned for the plastic arts, or particularly painting. He painted in oils, mostly. Um, anyway, so he's born in Belfast in, I'm trying to think, 1856, if memory serves. And he grew up in a not particularly wealthy family. Um, so uh, he was uh, Catholic. Um, the, there were often, I'm often told that there was so much anti-Catholic discrimination at the time. I'm not saying there's none at all. There was none by law by that stage, but it certainly didn't hold him back. And he moved to Glasgow, which is a bit of a sectarian tinderbox at the time. Regular fisticuffs come um, the 12th of July, the glorious 12th, as the Orange Order would say. But I don't think he was involved in any argy-bargy like that. He uh, went to art school and uh, soon he was getting lucrative commissions for his paintings. Um, and he was um, commissioned to paint uh, Queen Victoria's visits to the city. So you can see the city fathers certainly didn't hold um, his religious denomination against him. I think the whole uh, discrimination thing is um, decidedly overblown. So uh, John Lavery, then he moved to London and he was a society painter. Um, he became very close to the Asquith family, as in Henry Herbert Asquith, who later became Prime Minister, was a regular guest of theirs at Sutton Courtney and uh, painted uh, portraits of the family and uh, so many other famous people. So he became very wealthy indeed and he was knighted, that's why he became Sir John Lavery. You can see a plaque on, on the house he grew up in in Belfast, uh, which is not so shishi as this one. Gives you some idea how, um, how affluent he was to live here, just opposite uh, the French consulate. Um, anyway, so he married in the 1880s and they had one, he had one daughter his wife, but his wife, an, an Irish woman, she died only two years later. I can't remember which illness she, she succumbed to. Uh, he later married um, a woman from Chicago called Hazel. Now, Hazel, she was an Irish American. So, um, Lavery, he was uh, meant to be an official war artist during the First World War, going to France and painting battle scenes and things like that. Um, so, this stage, he wasn't a very politically minded person, didn't seem to perceive any contradiction between Irish identity and British identity, and indeed there isn't. But uh, many people contended to the contrary. Uh, however, he was uh, in, fa he was in failing health, because he was infirm, he didn't go to the battlefront that much. But uh, about this time, the 19 teens, um, his muse became not so much people, but uh, technology, and he liked to play, uh, to, to, to um, paint planes and trains and automobiles and things like that. Um, because uh, I suppose some of these things are relatively new. Well, not trains so much, but planes had been invented in, in, in 1903 and they were, they were developing apace because of the First World War. So he's, he's very much keeping up to date. Um, I don't know that much about his art as such, having seen quite plenty of his paintings, but they're fairly lifelike, they're rich, they're colorful, they're bright, what can I say? They're atmospheric, they're emotive but um, I'm not sufficiently well up on the history of arts to be able to comment in any depth on uh, his um, oeuvre. Um, what else about him? So his wife, Hazel Lavery, she was a zealous advocate of the Republican cause in Ireland. That's to say the belief that Ireland ought to break away from the United Kingdom and form a republic completely disconnected to, to, to Great Britain, or disconnected from Great Britain, I want to say. And uh, she was a confidant of Michael Collins, who was in the IRA, who was a Sinn Féin MP, who was the IRA Director of Intelligence, various other things. And then who from, uh, let's say, August 19, uh, well, well in, in 1922, he was the chairman of the Executive Council of the um, Provisional Government um, of the Irish Free State. Although, strictly speaking, the Irish Free State didn't come into existence until the 6th of December 1922, a bit after his death. Um, well, three and a half months after his death, to be, to be more exact. Um, so that's a head of government equivalent Prime Minister or Taoiseach in the Republic of Ireland. Uh, anyway, he'd had various other positions um, in the IRA. So some people thought they were romantically involved and that she was she went for anything in trousers. Was she having an extra marital liaison with him? Uh, it's dubious. There are historians who say that, they, that that wasn't the case. Maida Ryan, but Maida Ryan is about as biased a source as you could possibly find. Doesn't prove that she's wrong though, but she would very much wish to, wish to exculpate the reputation of Michael Collins, even though she's more of a, an, uh, an anti-treaty person would still think that you have to adulate him as an idol and you can't have anything um, smearing his reputation. 
Um, even if it's true, well, particularly if it's true, it has to be disproven. Anyway, I, I don't have any convincing evidence that they were having an extramarital affair. He was engaged to Kitty Kiernan at the time. Um, so that's that. And indeed, in um, July 1921, there was a truce between the IRA and the Crown forces, and the Sinn Féin delegation came here to London. And some of them spent some time in this house, some of them were on, on Hans Square, which are filmed elsewhere. Um, now, the uh, Crown had a spy in Irish Republican circles who was an American woman. That much has been, been deduced from archives. But the thing is, historians don't know who it was. It's possible it's her. A more likely candidate is thought to be Erskine Childers' wife. Um, or maybe it was somebody else. Um, and people, some people had doubts about Erskine Childers himself. There's this theory that he was always a Crown spy because remember Erskine Childers, he, he didn't fit the profile of your typical IRA man. He came from an upper class Protestant family, had gone to school in this country, in England, had gone to Cambridge University, blah, blah, blah was um, a unionist and was an ardent imperialist. A Johnny come late to the Republican cause, only at the last gasp, only 1914 really, did he convert to the Republican cause. And up until that time, Churchill was trying to persuade him to rejoin the British Army for the First World War, but he was saying no. Um, and he was the one who brought in, is it Asgard? That, that um, boat full of uh, Mauser rifles for the Irish volunteers in 1914. And it was executed in 1922. Some people who have been in the Sinn Féin movement, pro-treaty people, had a grudge against him, was it personal animus, did they think he was a crown spy all along, blah, 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 blah. If he really was, when he was sentenced to death, wouldn't he have sort of like asserted this and got um, the UK government to step in and save him, but maybe this just wasn't time because it was sort of in the middle of the night decision was taken to execute him a few hours later. No time to sort of send a letter and get someone to save him. Anyway, but this is Sir John Lavery, um, who lived on until 1941, and um, he died um, in Kilkenny, uh, but his funeral pl place took place at, um, at Robson Oratory. He's buried in Putney Vale, London. wonder why he wasn't buried in Ireland. So um, one of his subjects for his paintings is um, the funeral of Michael Collins of Lying in State, Love of Ireland, and that's that sort of hagiographic. Um, the the waxy-faced Collins has this um, um, angelic celestial glow to him. So a propaganda piece, really. What were his actual views? I'm not quite sure. But of course, you could be pro-Crown and pro-Collins in 1922 because, of course, Michael Collins was a faithful subject of King George V at that stage who voluntarily took an oath to be faithful and bear true allegiance to His Gracious Majesty, King George V, King of Ireland. Yes, that was King George V's title, King of Ireland, from 1921 onwards, from that treaty onwards um, to the day of his death and his heirs and descendants beyond him, well, only his two sons. Uh, anyway, that's enough about Sir John Lavery.